Yeah, go for it. All right, hi everyone. Uh, so, oh, shall I put this in? Yeah, you can please. Use Oh, yeah. yeah. Good call. Whoops. Okay, so um, I came here for a meeting a couple of hours ago, and the person who let me into the building was Pakon, and we got talking. And Pakon asked me what I'm working on, and I said, Well, we're trying to help people get civic tech projects off the ground. And he said, Cool, would you like to give the talk tonight at the event? <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I'm here. Um, so, two apologies to make. Firstly, um, this is a slide deck, obviously repurposed from something else, which was literally like five years ago, and only is only really the first bit of the talk. Uh, but the talk's only going to be ten minutes anyway, so it should be fine. Apology number two: I have a dinner tonight that I have to go to, so I'm not being that like egocentric speaker who doesn't stick around for the rest of the event. <laughs> My apologies, I have to go. Like, but hopefully, I'll get to talk to some people afterwards as well. Uh, cool. Uh, so this is what I'm talking about. Um, our background, our being the company that I run, um, that's the bit that I have slides for. Um, what we're doing now, which is the, the ask, like what I'm hoping to meet people uh, to collaborate with, and then a quick example of something we're doing already to yeah, create a juicy slide. So, uh, this happened uh, back in 2017, where Theresa May announced a snap election that was going to be in seven weeks or six and a half. Um, and uh, my business partner, co-founder, and I were already working together back then and uh, quickly WhatsApped each other and said, do you want to do something? And for the purposes of this, we will now be counting down the seven weeks for the rest of this bit of the talk. Hmm. Uh, so we bought a domain. Um, we were trying to decide whether it would be worth it because obviously this is the people's interest in who should I vote for over time. Uh, we were trying to build a startup. Would, would it be worth it if we decided maybe um, so we put out a tweet, that was the company name at the time, um, and we booked an Airbnb uh, for a weekend and started hacking something together. Um, we did a lot of designs. Uh, we then came here, and the rest of this, we were based here in New Speak House. Um, the first thing we launched was um, a tool to help students decide where to vote. So students have this interesting loophole where they are allowed legally to vote at their home postcode or their uni postcode, hmm. but no one really thinks about it tactically speaking, but obviously there's loads of safe seats in the country. So you want to go in the swing seats that they can have most impact. So we just did put YouTube postcodes and it compares. Um, here is a gift for the working. Uh, very slow gift. <laughs> um, and then it does this, so don't vote there, vote there if you want to have most impact. Um, there were a load of UX learnings from this that I won't go into too much detail on, but basically when you want someone to understand that this is the one to go with and this is not the one to go with, I recommend showing them in like five different ways simultaneously. So we have colour, we have a different icon, we have an arrow pointing <laughs> upwards, we have most impact written above it. Um, it that was one of our first UX learnings. Um, Jim Waterson, who was political ed editor of BuzzFeed at the time, um, saw me giving a talk right here, he was in the audience like there, and tweeted about it, and then it blew up on Twitter, and then it started going viral. Um, so doing talks like this is good. Uh, someone messaged a journalist, and yeah, anyway, sorry, this is a bit out of order, but you get the idea. This was the main thing that we launched just in time for the election itself. It was one of those who should I vote for quizzes, I'm sure everyone's seen them. Um, we didn't invent the concept of a vote, vote, who should I vote for quiz, obviously. All we did was spend very hard on the new apps, trying to make it as simple and easy to use as possible, without losing, losing the like quality of the result that you get. That was the difficult bit. Mm -hmm. So the two innovations we came up with, one, show people a fancy bar chart with bobbly heads that um, updates live as you click, and uh, that seemed to really increase the game rates. Um, the downside is people can see their answers as they go. Uh, that was a trade-off we decided to make. And then the second one is, um, getting the balance right between uh, lots of questions with loads of different responses you can give versus yes and no, which is what people like, um, but which doesn't give you a very high quality result. Um, so we did this like nuance, uh, with this thing we call nuance, which is basically, it asks you no and yes, and then you get a, the option of uh, saying no but, or no and, or yes but, or yes and, 
or just skipping to the next question, what we found is like most people, eight out of the 10 questions, they just said yes or no, and that's all, and then they had one or two that they really cared about and wanted to give that like, nuanced answer. Um, and that, that enabled us to give them a higher quality result. Uh, we partnered with these three organizations to embed versions of the quiz in their website, which hmm. massively helped get the word out. Um, we had a whole like different result thing with tactical voting with this really complicated animation that I'm not very proud of, but there you go. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we got covered by a lot of people. This was here on election night, um, where we were frantically trying to code things uh, to stop the site going down. Um, and then it really did go viral. We got over 2 million completes. Um, this was a screenshot from whatever analytics we were using at the time, um, some more analytics. Um, and so we went into the guy that called wrote an article about us. So that's me. That's my <laughs> good founder. And that was uh, Jan. And someone help me out. This guy. Josh. Josh, thank you. Who were helping us. Uh, <coughs> uh, anyway, we weren't the only one. Like, lots of these did very well as well. Um, this one I will come back to in a minute. Um, okay, that's the first bit of the talk. How am I doing for time? Four minutes left. That's great. Okay, perfect. You can go over, like, yeah. up to 20, just you lose oh, Q&A. Right, no, no, no. I, think, I think four minutes is about right. Okay, so that's, what, that's why I'm interested in this stuff. We, we attempted lots of these. That was the one that worked on other elections. It didn't go viral at all. We tried to take some learnings from that. Um, what I do now is... Um, I live in the US and I run a, the new version of our startup, which is called Savvy, uh, which is basically no and low code tools for um, building products. So, our typical customer is a product manager um, who wants to improve their onboarding flow or their in app experience or something like that um, and is tired of saying, hey, can we update the heading or can we run a split test and having to wait like three weeks for a really simple change to come back. So, this is where like, no-code tools really shine, and we've just found something that other people haven't been doing. Um, so this is what we do on a standard day-to-day -day basis. But um, my co-founder and I are still very passionate about civic tech, democracy tech. Um, and what we've always wanted to do is find a way of applying this. And the more people we've talked to in this space, the more we've realized, well, actually, the exact same problem exists here, is that, um, as ever, developers are a scarce resource. This is not meant to replace developers. Uh, but the developers in the audience. Um, <laughs> it's more of a low-code tool than a no-code tool, honestly. What this is meant to do is augment developers. So if you have access to a developer, if you're like uh, three people trying to build a civic tech project, um, and one of you is a developer, great, you can now work at, say, 10x the speed. If you don't have a developer at all, great, you can now do something instead of nothing. Um, so the ask for us, really, is Anyone who is working on or knows someone who is working on some kind of civic tech project, it could be something that already exists, it could be something that's just at the idea phase or anything in between, um, we want to offer our services to help get it off the ground. If it's just an idea and you don't have any funding, that's totally fine. Um, well, whether or not you have funding, we're not going to ask them for any money, like absolutely not. All of this is completely free. Um, but yeah, if it's just an idea, then we can help develop it, we can do the whole thing for you, or we can give you access to the platform in case you have to use it, or whatever. If you um, have grant money, let's, if you've got like 50k of grant money from the Brown Tree Foundation or something to build a thing, uh, instead of spending 45k on developers and having the remaining 5k to write the content or do marketing for it or all the other stuff that needs to be done, uh, now you, you can spend all of that money on those things um, because we'll do the rest of it. So you 10x mm. the amount of money spend on the actual like, um, important stuff, the content. Um, so yeah, please talk to me about this. And then um, finally, an example of this. So vote for policies, it was one of the other voting quizzes that I showed on a previous slide that were also at 2017, but they've been going every election. So this is by far the most consistent um, election tool. They consistently get over a million people which is impressive, in part because um, it does get you to think and read a lot of stuff. So uh, I think it's doubly impressive that they managed to get that many people to do something that's quite in depth. So it looks like this. You select issues that you care about. 
then you get shown a list of policies. So this is one party and a bullet point list of their policies within that particular issue. But it doesn't tell you which party it is. So it's just this party, one, two, three, four, five, and then it goes on to the next issue. You end up choosing which, um, and it helps you kind of create a short list and then your actual choice. And then at the end, um, it shows you, well, you get your personal results and then you can also look at um, results in your nation and uh, the whole of the UK. Um, it's really cool, like, we knew them back when we were, like, uh, the map we run spoke for policies was also based here for some of it. Um, and we got talking recently <coughs> about the massive feature backlog that they had, of things that they could build, but it's a volunteer run thing, they never have time to build them. They were worried that they get to the next election and still not built anything more. Um, and so I'm really thrilled and proud that they are now using our platform. And this is this that this screenshot is taken from our rebuilding of their tool on our platform. So they are basically the guinea pig of what we're trying to do here, which is speed things up. So we rebuilt it in about a week, and now we're discussing okay, what features are we going to start adding first? So the, so it really is possible. Um, we're just looking for more of these. Any questions for Jeremy? Um, what are the current uh, <coughs> projects you're working on now for people using your like, uh, tools? So, in Civic Tech, it's literally just focal policies. Right. And possibly we might build one of our own, I guess, for the next election. Um, but that's, that's why I'm here. Hmm. And then we have a bunch of like boring customers that do all sorts of things. We have <laughs> um, what were the main lessons you drew from a failure to have that same success after um, mm. so the 2019 election? Mm. And yeah, because uh, that seemed a lot more charged. So, what would people be hungrier for them? Yeah, yeah, great question. Um, well, the lessons we took for us were uh, it's about experimentation and it's about shots on goal. So we, we honestly think we got pretty lucky with the one before. We didn't have many chances at experimenting and then um, iterating on what we learned. So it was the right thing at the right time and I think we got pretty lucky. Um, and we had a similar thing, like we weren't able to focus as much as we'd like because we had a company to run. Like the company had developed further by the next year so we, we had a bit less time. Um, the whole point of what we're trying to do now is say, well, if you use a no-code tool, then you can iterate really, really quickly. So we basically built the tool that we wish we had for the 2019 election. If we had this, maybe we would have been able to do like 10 versions, the 10th of which would have been the right one. Mm. Hmm. Could you say a little bit about like some crucial thing that uh, you're able to do that, say, Typeform doesn't do? Oh, sure, yeah. So Typeform is great. Uh, so people familiar with Typeform, it's like a really easy way of setting up a form. Um, it's really great if you want to focus on content alone and you only need the component types that Typeform can give you. Um, what We're basically the other extreme in terms of flexibility. So you can't set something up as quickly in our tool as you can with Typeform, but um, you can always, like the, you can do any anything you can do in CSS. So complete design flexibility and complete logic flexibility, although it will involve writing some custom code a lot of the time, but you can always do it. So people off, uh, on our like business commercial side, people will often graduate from Typeform. It's a startup, they just have a simple Typeform on their website and they're like, okay, well we want to start making this look more like we built it ourselves or we want to add split tests or whatever it is, and then they move to us. By the way, we've met before, I think. Uh, yeah, but but I realised I would think I've met you before that as well. Anyway, we can talk about it. Yes. <laughs> uh, any more questions? Sorry. Um, when you deal with like trying to point people to the right part and so on, how do you ensure that the information you, you present are impartial? And like mm -hmm. the interpretation of the policies or the way you simplify the policies and because everyone has a point of view and like, how do you deal with that? Yeah, um, yeah, great question. Um, I mean, with both the policies, that's more of a question for them because we consider ourselves the tech provider mm -hmm. and we try and stay neutral on that. 
But in, um, but, but in the one that we built, yeah, um, we put a lot of effort into that. So that was one where that was one area where we did do a lot of writing and rewriting. Um, we also created a sort of semi-formal board of oversight with some academics and other people from some not-for-profits. I mean, it was hashed together at the last minute, so it was kind of rushed. But the idea was so that they would review all the content and you know all of that. So I think having those processes in place is really is really important. Um, yeah, that's that's the side unfortunately that isn't made any faster by having a no-code tool, but at least it frees you up to do it. Could you reframe the question just for the video? I guess. Oh, maybe. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. I think so, you're the yeah. loudest uh, and clearest. In, on so, uh, what um, do, do I have you tools in mind that yeah, I wish you could like be some design briefs to like teenagers who like building stuff? Um, yeah. Yeah. What, you, what kind of design briefs would you like to start from the like, Sure. Uh, do you want me to? Did you capture that? That's or great. You, yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, Working the kinks. So yeah, if. if my suggestions for tools if people are looking to build them would be, um, so I, I think this is more like a category of, of things to be built, but I really think that um, we don't focus enough on engaging people in between elections, or at least maybe we focus on it, but we're not as successful. So finding ways to create um, variations of these kind of tools that people care about on a day-to-day -day basis, because democracy is there all the time, I mean, what, one of the things about the tool that we built, and probably all of the above, is they, they're a good way of helping someone decide based on their opinions. But how did they come to those opinions in the first place? They're not going to change their opinions the day before an election. So tools around that, I think. I mean, I think if you want to engage people on a day-to-day -day basis, the easiest way to do that is to follow the news cycle. Um, I was a journalist for a few years, so like my, my default is always to say, okay, well, what are the current issues at the moment? What kind of data visualizations or tools can you, you know, okay, how would this policy affect my income, this tax policy or something? Or, um, like those kind of things, I think, are really important. But what you need is a, a, a machine for quickly producing them. Like having one idea and then saying, okay, what should we build? Even with a no code tool, by the time you built it, it's out of the news cycle. For, your, for students, um, I, yeah, I don't, I, I don't know if I would start throwing around precise ideas, but I would say like start to, to start with one thing and get into the habit of experimenting with it, getting feedback early. It's the same as like you know when I like occasionally I mentor someone about startups generally. It's exactly the same thing. Like start getting feedback really, really early, and you'll immediately find out that everything you thought was wrong and <laughs> start iterating. Asking about tracking it in between elections, or you mean when we do the voter quiz, having that as a factor in the scoring mechanism? Yeah, it's more like when you're thinking about voter quiz, because I know that a lot of people think that policies are the things that like, are the unit of yeah. contention or decision making for right. voters, but I kind of noticed maybe that, that these other things are kind of interesting. Yeah, so. no, I fully agree. Yeah, I mean, so we've thought about this a little bit. Um, so with vote for policies, the whole idea is to get is to try and persuade people to think more about policies and less about personalities. And I, I know that it's not just those two; it's not a binary. But that's that's as I understand it, that's their aim. Um, with uh, with our quiz that we did in 2017 and 2019, particularly the latter, we did put some time into trying to think. Okay, well, could we have a section for like what policies do you like, and another section for um, how much do you want to wait, like whether you trust these politicians to actually do what they say based on their past performance? 
uh, the fact that it took me so long to figure out how to say that in a sentence showed that that was the difficult <laughs> bit to get across, and we ended up cutting it. But yeah, I think I think a really a truly useful um, voting quiz would need to include that as well. Yeah, does that answer the question? Thank you. Uh, hi, Jeremy. Sorry, I missed your. Uh, that's all right. It's the question, what, what is my presentation? No, 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 it's a developer thing. Okay. Uh, uh, basically, uh, you know, um, like GitHub and, uh, and Heroku, now Heroku is like being paid for, it, and this is literally a developer thing. Okay. All right. Which uh, platform do uh, you literally best put your MVP on for free? Oh. Um. Well, I think it depends what it is, because then how you build it depends whether you need host it. So, for example, if you built it on Savvy, uh, you could also host it on Savvy. Mm -hmm. um, if you wanted to build a website that then contains it, we recommend Webflow, uh, mm -hmm. which is what well, is kind of like Wix or Squarespace, but with much more flexibility. Um, and then even if you're just using that as a hosting provider, you can basically like drop an embed link from us into Webflow, and it, it's very cheap and easy to use. For like actual dev tools, something like Heroku but free. Um, there's a really cool tool called Superbase, uh, S U P A Base, um, which has a really generous free plan, and uh, it is on my list to reach out to them to try and partner so that they can offer like free credits for, for the Civic Tech stuff. Um, so if, if you get past the free plan, they're not exactly like Heroku. They're a bit more like Fire, a Firebase competitor, but open source. Mm. Um, but they do, uh, they overlap quite a lot. Um, Can you just spell that again? Oh, so S U P A oh, and then base, super base. Um, they're, really, they're a great example of like open core startups where it's like WordPress, you know, there's the open source version and then there's the paid hosted version if you want it, but they don't force you to use it. Um, yeah, a direct Heroku alternative, I'm not sure I could think of a free one off the top of my head. Mm. Sorry. Sorry, what was the other place? The other one? You mentioned the, the flow. Oh, Webflow. Webflow. Yeah, mm -hmm. Webflow. They're really cool. Um, they, yeah. Uh, full disclosure, the CEO of that invested in our startup. So that's, that's the disclosure. Uh, but they, they genuinely are really good. I can vouch. I use it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, almost all of our customers use Webflow as their main thing. So that's probably a better data point to give you. It's like, for startups, Webflow, it seems to be the default place to build your website. They're only for static websites, though. So. Cool. 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 Thank you very much. Yeah.